you know we ready. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your absolutely favorite podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Riffin' with Griffin. And today we got uh, another special guest. Uh, we on fire these days uh, with the guests, you know. Had uh, Stevie Weeby. We got uh, we had Adam Devine. Uh, the Twitch channel is blowing up. Uh, make sure you check that out at Eric Twitch.tv. Eric Griffin Gaming. Uh, also YouTube Eric Griffin Gaming. And right now we got another tremendous guest, Mr. Tom Suck. That's right, y'all, Mr. Uh, Tom Segura. <laughs> yes, it is. We got Mr. Tom Segura from uh, uh, your mom's house, um, you know, and a uh, great special ball hog, which we talk about. And so, you know, I'm really, I'm really glad he uh, took some time to uh, come on and, you know, give me a ring. And we did it. You know, we're trying to do the best we can during these crazy times and the show must go on. The content must keep coming. Uh, so, and I appreciate all the love and support. So please uh, share, subscribe, and, and hit the notifications. And, you know, tell your friends about me. Tell your friends about me. And let's uh, keep the show growing because we will get back to normal. We will. I know it. And then, you know, it'll be like we never stopped in terms of like, you know, th- this podcast. I'm just speaking for me. But anyways, I hope you enjoy. Uh, it's a great interview. Give it up for Mr. Tom Segura. Okay, here we go. Um, and anyways, welcome to the show. Calling with Griffin. And this is Mr. Tom Segura. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, let me just get to the big stuff first. Like, Because it's been like two weeks now, and I'm seeing all these great articles about your special ball hog. Oh, I mean, thanks. Like, what do you what do you think about it? Like, like, like you came out with a quarantine special and didn't even know it. I know. Like, could, could be one of the last specials we see in that format for a long time. Like, what? How do you feel about that? It's uh, it, I, it's really strange because um, as the quarantine started is when I was like, oh, like we're all gonna be at home, and then um, as it, you feel bizarre to be like prom- like when I was promoting it heavily, you know, like yeah, like oh yeah, <laughs> make sure you watch it. Um, and then everyone keeps telling you. Oh, aren't you like? Are you excited? And you're like, well, it's it's a, yeah, you know, it's kind of a strange excitement to be like, I'm so glad people are terrified and out of work right now. <laughs> I know, I know. It's yeah. like it's like it's such a first world problem for you to be like, yeah. you know, it's like, hey guys, be safe out there, but also check out my special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. It definitely felt. And then this was the first time in like the whole time I've had a relationship with Netflix where they gave me a report on the performance right. and I was like, but since it's the first time you have nothing to compare it to. So then Got I was, you. I go, well, what does that mean? Like, how did it, how did it do versus the last one? And they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, no, it smashed it. And I was like, Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I guess. I know. What are you supposed to say? Like, thank yeah. you quarantine. You know, it's like, I don't know what you're supposed to like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, I mean, it's funny. Cause you just, I mean, you said it, but you know, nothing will be shot now for months. So it's yeah. Like, Whatever was shot up until, you know, a month ago, that's it. That's all that's in the can. So there, yeah. will, there will be no, there will be no, like, um, stand-up specials that are shot or come out after a certain point here for a while. Yeah, I think Chris D'Elia's might be the last one that's going to come out on Netflix. Yeah, I haven't heard of, I don't, I mean, there might be obviously another one or two in the can that we don't know about. Right, I, that's true, that's true. I don't know, but yeah, after that, that'll be it for a while. I know, and who knows when it will even come back in that format in a sense of, like, you look out into a crowd of thousands of people or hundreds of whatever, how many it is, sitting right next to each other, too. Like, who knows when it's going to be like that again? I mean, it's just... I think I that ever, we will not see live entertainment get back to where it was until uh, they go, like, here's the vaccine. Like you can yeah, do- dude, I've been saying the same thing. Yeah. I've been saying the same thing now for a couple of weeks. Just I even talked to like a Dane Cook said said this to me. He was like, 
you know, I, it was like, we're not going to be back until there's a vaccine. Our business is going to be shut down. And it's just, it's hard to even think about. I mean, isn't it weird to fathom that like four weeks ago, we had all these plans and tours planned and oh, yeah. going to the comedy store every other night. And, and now here we are, like, you know, people coming to your podcast studio. You know what I mean? Like, it's all these kind of things that are just like, like out of nowhere. It's such a bizarre thing to live through. And I still, like, I, I think about that, um, I had a show March 12th, March 13th, March 14th that I canceled, or I, I rescheduled, and we rescheduled them for April. At the time, we're like, just put them in April. Yeah. And they, I think they moved them to June, and then I talked to my agent yesterday, and he sounded so sad, man. Yeah, I know. He was like, <laughs> is that, like, even like a week or two ago, he was like, talking about the summer, definitely the fall, and then now he's like, we have all these... Di- tour plan for 2021 yeah like i don't even know if that'll happen you know i know and it's just like and also i think there'll be a mad scramble because i think people will want this i mean because i i I appreciate how people are loving like this you know whatever you put out like i put out these pot i put i've put out more content now than i ever have yeah people you know i get these great messages from people like oh man i really appreciate this and these times i'm bored and i i'm depressed and you're really helping me so i mean people want entertainment i mean it's like you know i miss sports i miss going to the movies you know i mean all these kinds of things but yeah who knows when it's really going to be a comedy club is going to be open again or a, a stadium. So I think there'll be a mad dash, like all the, all the big tour acts. I don't know if, I don't know if they'll be back in thousand seaters anymore. It might be, everybody's going to be in the comedy club again until, might you be. know what I mean? It might be. I mean, I know. And then you think of like, you know, the biggest entertainment are, our major sports, you know? Yeah. Oh, I uh, miss sports so much. I know. <laughs> like, you know, we'll, 20,000 in, in a basketball arena or 100,000 in a football stadium want to do that. I mean, it's really, you know, the NBA thing was obviously a mate, like it's a, it's unprecedented, incomprehensible to imagine the NBA season getting cut short. And then right. at uh, NFL coming up and you're like, no shit, like this, this also might not take place, you know? I know, and I watch a lot of like those debate shows, First Take and PTI and all those kind of shows. Yeah. And it's funny to watch them acting like everything's going to be fine in a, in a month, you know? Like the, the way they're talking about football every morning, they're like, Tom Brady's in uh, Tampa. And it's like, we may never see that. Like, Tom Brady may never play football again because the season will be canceled. I know. You know what I mean? I, I totally agree with you. And I, I, I think like the thing is, I want those people to be right. This is one of those times where I'm like, yeah, I want, I for want- sure. You're right. I really do. I want it. I always felt like, um, like what we're going through was unimaginable because living in this era with technology and information and just such brilliant minds that know how to resolve everything, you could not. I would never believe that this would be a possibility. And yeah, yeah. People being like, just stay home. That's our like. That's the solution. Just I know. It's so weird. It's like, well, they're basically saying, like, yo, while we're figuring this out, can y'all just chill for, <laughs> like, three months? You what? know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, just chill out for three months. Even though I kind of believe that, like, I think the, the world, I think that every year the whole world should shut down for a week. Anyway. I know. There, there's, there is, like, this weird part of this that is, like, enjoyable to a degree. You know? I know what you mean. Yeah. Not the part where people are losing their jobs and we're not being in, in, unsympathetic to that. We're just saying that, like, trying to find the silver lining in it is what we're saying right yeah. now. So I know exactly what you we're mean. Also, like the like feeling the hustle die, so that like it's like it's like everyone's saying like, don't worry about. Like, I'm saying more specifically to what we do, but like, don't worry about your auditions or your yeah, <laughs> like just, just live life for a moment. Yeah. That yeah. part what I mean is like. You're like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying stuff with my family more. I was gonna say, how 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 have you adjusted? How has it been? Because for me, just, I'll just tell you, for me personally, at first it was very difficult. Like my girlfriend's with me, and like you know, we're we're like I was ring shopping and like think before this all happened. So I was really, I'm really serious. But this kind of like really puts you in a like, can you live with this person? Can you like? It's really like you know, it's really giving me a, a different perspective. And so the first couple of days, I'm gonna be like like week. It was I was like, oh shit. 
this is really difficult. But now I'm in a groove and we're great. But yeah. like, how was it for you? Like, you've been married for how long now? You you've know, been you guys. Uh, uh, fuck, almost twelve years. Right, right, right. So you already, you are, you already. Whatever you well, dislike about her, it's already there. <laughs> Right, just like, but I think I've been saying that I think this highlights the reality of your relationship. So if yes. you're with somebody you're compatible with, you're gonna be like, you know what? We are super compatible. This really does work. Right. And That's I, where I'm at. I talked to a couple people that that agree. They they think that when this does end, you're gonna see an explosion of divorces. Oh well, that happened in China. Did you see that article about that? Yeah, yeah, it already happened in China. It was like four times, five times as many divorces coming out of their quarantine. I did not know that. Yeah, man. So, of course, uh, you know. Well, yeah, it's imagine the, the person stuck in a, let's say, the person who's married and their regular routine is like they go to work. Maybe they take business trips yeah. and they, they don't really get along, but they're like, yeah, you know, it's just. I can deal with it because I don't have to see you that much, and I do. Right. All, I do all these other things, and then this happens, and they're like, "No, no, no! Stay in a home with that person, and don't leave at all for like ninety. <sighs> Shit, or in, and we don't even have to be so morbid about it. It even could be if you have a routine and you don't even realize that you're not near this significant other. Because of because of your life routine, maybe yeah. she works, you work. You know, like our business, we travel, and then we come back. We 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 take time to miss each other, and then when you see each other again, you're like, oh, it's good to see you. Yeah. Now it's just like you know, when you're just there all the time. Even a great relationship may not be prepared for what this is. What this is. I mean, how that's, do you think? What would you be? What would your advice be for somebody that's married twelve years? Um, I mean, <laughs> no. I, I, I think, man, like, I mean, I can, I can only go through, like, our day. You know, we have two little kids, so our our, our day is about routine, you know? like Oh, uh, got you. So it's 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 basically, like, making um this, like, a, a family function for us. And I, we've just been fortunate that, like, everyone's healthy. And, you know, we do we do the thing. Like, we get up, you have breakfast, you get the kids ready. We yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Um, you just kind of my, my my girl wears different outfits. It's crazy. Like she gets up and she puts on like she puts on like I go. Why are you looking all cute today? Where are we going? <laughs> you know what I mean. But it's like, but I totally get it, dude. I think that's important. I think yeah. that's good. You know what Christina did? Uh, my wife ordered wigs and she put on wigs. <laughs> I got really horny. I really thought a wig yeah. a wig changes somebody's appearance completely. Like yeah. You, the face looks different with a wig on, like, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, let's let's get down. Yeah, I'm finding out things I didn't know I was supposed to find out. Like, I'm finding out like what kind of porn she likes. I'm finding wow. out, like, you know what I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, but but I don't know about you, but like, I at first was it was hard for me. I was feeling like a little bit of depression because of like this like lack of. Um, creative release you know yeah. that we have all the time I, I i felt pent up and i feel like i feel you so i've been like cooking you know yeah. i've been cooking and washing hand washing the dishes and like you know because i just need like i feel like i need something to do and so you that's need- why i started this you know like yeah. how, how was that for you uh, i i try to do a bunch of things like i try to go for a walk every day uh, yeah I, I work out at home i've even done like virtual training you know like uh, oh sweet um I, so i try to exercise and then, since I know we can't do stand up, I I've been I've been writing things that like it's not stand up, but just writing. Yeah, uh, it, it feels like you're actually creatively working towards something. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and I've actually been interacting. I've been more social in quarantine than I ever am in regular life. Like I've called more people, Facetime more people. I've been going on IG live, like like saying hi to people. I don't know. It, it's made me more social. Well, I mean, I, look, I've been saying this a lot, too, is that before this happened, people, especially young people, think that this is enough. Yeah. They're on their Snapchat. They're on the Instagram. Yeah. They're on it. The, and they think like, oh, this is the only interaction I need. And you old people don't understand. Like, uh, yeah. this is how we communicate now. Now all those motherfuckers are like realizing, oh, this isn't enough. No. It's not enough. 
We need social c- interaction. We're communal creatures, and we need to actually look, see, touch, smell. It's just part of who we, part of like who we are, man. Does it? Did it? Get, did it make you think about at all? Because we see those stories in the news all the time about, especially in prisons, when somebody's in isolation and they go, you know, it it can make them really lose their minds. I started oh, yeah. about isolation in that sense because those stories are always so sad and you're like god damn. like they like you throw a dude in a hole for 30 days and they come out like a different person because they have like <sighs> no human interaction and then you th- i've been thinking about how there's a bunch of people probably just like normally lonely people but they at least have access to other people if they want to who are kind of like in this forced quarantine you yeah. know alone and it, and it makes me go like jesus that could really have a Damn yeah, it. man. Like, I feel like, look, look, you know, I think people in the entertainment business and like, you know, uh, entertainers, you know, uh, above middle class, sort of like wealthier people too, like are not having the same quarantine experience, no way. you know, and it's like, it's something to really be like sensitive to. I saw Lady Gaga talking about this too, you yes. know, where she was like, look, we're not like the the, the the economy and even like for me on a smaller level i mean i'm i'm not i'm not struggling i, I wasn't poor or anything like that but but i i save my money but i only but it's like maybe if this goes a year i'll be okay but after that what do i do for money i don't know i mean i'm in a situation like that, but still i'm there's other people who were like they lost everything right now yeah. so it's like but but so i i, I feel like our isolation is different from like, and even in different cities, like if you think about New York, who's New York is so compact, like everybody, you know, those, these little apartments and these little, you know what I mean? It's like, I can't even imagine because I feel stir crazy and I have an upstairs and downstairs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I, we forget it a lot. I, I actually thought she made an excellent point. Because yeah. Her point, I mean, look, is it, you could make an argument that this is like semantics about like when you say like, you know, we're all in this together because. We are we we all have to, you know. We're, we're all doing the same thing, but we're not we're not we're not all having the, we're not all having the same experience. Yeah, and then her point was like, as Lady Gaga, her quarantine looks way different than like someone who was a bartender, you right. know, or, or like a whatever a city worker who's out of work now and is like desperate because they don't know what's going to happen next and they can't pay their bills. It's a different thing. And yeah, I, I totally get that, man. But I mean, it's all relative though. I mean, it's like, it doesn't take away the person's experience. It's like, yeah. I saw one of these rappers, Tyga, Tiga, whatever his name is. And he's in his mansion and he's on like a, a not a Segway, but one of those, one of those scooter things. Oh, things. Yeah. Yeah. And he's spinning around his living room and he's all like, I'm so bored. He's on this big marble counter doing like a beat and he's rapping like, I'm bored. I'm bored. And I'm thinking to myself, like bro you are bored but then there's people who sitting in their little whatever looking at their phone like god damn i wish i was there with you of so course it's, just, it's, it's it's all relative, it's all relative. <laughs> you know what i mean you're totally right it's all relative man yeah man craziness dude but like i'm looking at i was looking at before i called before we got on i was like just looking at like you really are getting a lot of great uh um articles about your special really i i stop i i usually i know you don't you, you can't look at that shit but yeah, I, I, you know we for go, the p- purpose of this, I am. <laughs> you know, Dad will will be like, I read this and I read that, and I'll read a couple, but then I go like, I, I don't want to do like a deep dive and find out what everybody thinks. <laughs> All right, right. But do you feel misunder? Do you feel misunderstood though? Like some of the, the characterization is like it's like this one says Tom Segura is trying to upset you with his Netflix special Ball Hawk, and it's hilarious. Like when you hear that, is that accurate or are you like, no, I'm just. Because I, as a comic, I know what you mean. You like, you say something, and somebody goes, "I can't believe you're trying to say this about that." And you're just like, "No, I thought that was funny, and I said it." <laughs> Dude, that that should be like every interview is <laughs> be like, I, "I thought it was funny." Like, yeah, uh, yeah. There's not like a big game plan or <laughs> ever. They ask like some of these journalists. They ask questions, and you're like, "I did all this press," and I was like, "Jesus, I think they think this <laughs> way deeper." <laughs> Yeah, you were like, you just want to go like, can we get to the part where like I just thought that this story was funny, yeah, and this interaction was funny, and I put it together in a long, funny way story. Yeah, I know, man, but you know, you know what I find it's the difference between like, you know, especially in the last say ten years, like what we do in the clubs, live performance, 
it's such a different experience th- than from what we're doing and, and putting in it, broadcasting it to like the mass public. It's, yeah. it's somehow, isn't it weird how it's perceived differently? Oh, it's totally perceived differently. Yeah, it's completely perceived differently. I mean, I don't know, man. It, it's like when we're at the comedy store every night, um, you just feel like, I feel like the, most of the people there are just like, you guys are a good time. You're, <laughs> yeah. It's just, we just came here to laugh, and that's what you guys do. You make us laugh, and I don't know. Even like we all talk to each other about that's a good bit, that's a funny angle. It's it's like it's not that serious, just as it should be, right? Like we shouldn't be. We're not serious. That's the whole point. We're not serious. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I don't know. For some, like part of it is is like we're actually dealing with that those huge articles that are breaking it down because it's so popular like if stand up right. popular nobody would care to write those articles so it's almost like we're like all right i mean this thing got such huge exposure that now you know there's people are writing their their thesis on on what we do but i think they look at it way more like academically than we do yeah yeah that's funny you say that but i know i i, I agree with you but there's also a time like okay, so I remember when Leslie Jones got on SNL, yeah, and she was doing some bits that she does in her stand up at the club, and then she did she's on the news the 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 what did that the breaking news thing they do on SNL, and she did one of her like bits and got a lot of flack for it because of what she was saying, and I'm just thinking to myself, damn, if these if you were at the club, you would see her doing it at the club. I mean, I'm just saying it's strange how, like, we could be at the club doing these bits, even racier bits, even, like, you know, challenging, the, like, you know, whatever we're talking about, gay, or transgender, or politics, religion. Then you, tr- you, as soon as you put it on tape, and more than 100 people watch it at home that have Twitter, all of a sudden it turns into, like, you're – the you you can become like the worst person ever because, to like a small group of people. <laughs> right. Because the people who are who always watch this on tape never watch it in the clubs. Yeah, they really it's do. like you're you're showing it to people who don't enjoy that on a regular basis and asking them to like weigh in on it. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. that that bit you could do that bit in front of five thousand people and kill and everybody walks out of there being like that was great. But when you broadcast it People see it who don't digest that type of thing normally. And then they have it like they weigh in on what's wrong with it. Like I remember that. I remember the Leslie Jones thing. I think – wasn't it like something like like slaves made me or something? Like she was like descendants of – Yeah, something like that. It's, it, but the way she does it, it's all about her performance. And, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It's, it, yeah. it didn't deserve the, the that kind of treatment. The opposite. It was so funny. Like it was yeah. so f- – <laughs> I remember that it was like such a surprise line. I, I was like, I saw, I saw that there was like people were talking about, it and I watched it, and I was like, this shit is hilarious. I'd never right. seen it before. So fun. Uh, dude, I don't know. I'm just like I say, I'm just trying to like not go stir crazy right now. Yeah, I know. That's, you know, it's just I don't know what's even. It's, it's hard to describe. Wait outdoor walks at all yeah but i was about to say you you said that like taking a walk i feel like california was like saying to us hey fuck you because it started to rain you know what i mean i think it's like california was like yo keep your ass inside <laughs> Here's a bar- and we're gonna make it rain you know so i was like oh man it's just dreary out the here rain, the rain rain day quarantines can be a bummer a real bummer you know oh, yeah oh my god dude it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just bananas, man. And then and standing outside feels good on these days, you know. Dude, I went to get the mail, and I was just like, I felt, I felt like I was in like in a movie, and I've been locked up for like ten years. Yeah, you know those scenes in the movie where the guy gets out and he's just standing in the sun like this. <laughs> yeah. No, I figured, I freaking felt like that. I was like, oh, let the sun beat down on me. Uh, yeah. And then you had this. Did you? What do you think about that thing about like the mayor put out that thing like he's encouraging snitching? No, nah, that's whack, dude. That's that is that is not cool at all. I mean, my whole thing is like, who's going to determine? Like, like, so is everybody going to be making a citizens arrest? Like, hey, what are you doing out? You got to be like, now I have to tell everybody my business. Yeah, my mom has dementia, and I got to go see her. You know what I mean? Like, what? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, it's it's a bad thing to try to get going. Yeah. Be like, you know, rat on people. 
But, but yeah, there's so many questions about how you would enforce it. But also, those fucking assholes exist anyways. Like, they, yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Always <laughs> trying to tattletale on people. They're the worst. Dude, dude I was seven. A friend was, of mine's a doctor that she was at the uh, grocery store. And they have a line, like a, they put like a tape orange line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was standing behind it. And then the guy was standing at the register buying his groceries. And the guy turned around and was like, can you stand further back? And she was, (laughs) she looked down. She was like, I'm behind the line. And like, we, we have the distance between us. He was like, no, you should go back even further. And uh, she was like, no. (laughs) <laughs> yeah like fuck you <laughs> then he told the cashier he was like can you tell her so that I don't have to And but it's in front of her so she goes uh, he doesn't have I, I hear you and yeah. I'm not moving anymore oh man I, I feel like I feel like there's a certain personality and they're usually like I don't want to stereotype but a lot of times they're like White ultra left hippie people, yeah. the worst people. Yeah, the, you, you, they like. Okay, so I'm at Seven Eleven the other day. I just I'm grabbing, just trying to get some drinks and get the hell out of there. I got my mask on, whatever you know. I got you. I wear a scarf, so I look like I'm robbing the place. You know what I mean? Um, they uh, this guy's in his. So the so I see I come outside and there's a guy in his car and he's saying something to another guy who's got a mask on, but the guy in the mask he starts scolding the guy in the car. You know you shouldn't be out in public without a mask. He's going on and on and on. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, like is this you? You're gonna do that shit to the wrong person. Of course you are. You know I, you know I, what I mean? Yeah. I it's think- like. Always, Mind your business. <laughs> a danger, more of a danger to the white hippie guy who does that than because like women for the most part, you know, they can mouth off about something and people. are It's like calling the manager. It's like white women do that yeah. in a restaurant. I need to see the manager, and we just kind of go, okay, everybody back away. But yes, yes, the guys. I agree. The dude can get might get if he says it to the wrong person, is going to get clocked in the face, man. Yeah, I just I just think it's I. I, I, I it's one thing to come up to – like if you're in a restaurant, not even a restaurant, or like you're in a store or you're in some kind of like place where there's like a lot of people, all right, then it's like, hey, I think you should wear a mask because, you know, it says it in the thing. You could say something – there's like a time and place. But yeah. the way this guy was scolding this guy, I was like, yo, get off your moral high ground, man. No. I know. You know, it's a weird. It's a weird. I don't know how to feel about it, but I just feel I, like this is going to create some like weirdness. Yeah, there's all the whole, everything together. Everything in the the recipe right now is going to make. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to make that yeah. want to do that more. Sometimes I feel like I want to get into a fight with somebody outside just to feel like I'm interacting with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you should just go up and hit somebody. See? Yeah, you know. Then after the fight, I go, "Thank you. I just, ugh, I needed that." <laughs> I know. I even like. I even like. I just even even some clan members or some clan member was like, "Yo, you stupid!" You know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah. "Oh, hey guys, good to talk to somebody." <laughs> yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> That's hilarious. I um, I feel like that that uh, sh- that ultra liberal hippie white lady is, in my experience, also the one of the only people that has basically tried to ruin everyone's good time at a comedy club. You know? Oh, dude. I- Wow, you preach it to the choir now. Yeah. In my experience, in all my years of doing stand up, the top 10 worst heckler experiences I've ever had are always women. Yeah, I agree. Just always. And I don't know why that happens. I, I don't get it. You know, and, and then, but I will say this a portion of it is because. After the Me Too movement, I think the Me Too movement made uh, good comics great mm-hmm. and mediocre comics kind of like don't know how to handle because you, you have to adjust. You know, you adjust. You know, we all made adjustments. You know what I mean? We all like said, OK, well, I, I, I still want to be I still want to talk about misogynistic topics, but I just got to be more thoughtful about it now. <laughs> I'm five years. You have to you either change with it or you don't. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you know, so before that, you might deal with a heckler, and there's things you would say, or, or like, or maybe the subject you're bringing up is inspiring this woman to be so upset. But now, it's like, but, but a lot of times it is. I don't know what that 
mentality is that I don't know why they always assume ill intent. This is my problem with it. Like we're at a comedy club. I'm going to say something off-putting. You may disagree with it. You may be like, mm, I didn't like that one. Okay. You know how you don't like something like this? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it takes like a scene has to oh, be made. You know your, what I mean? You just answered your own question because the reason somebody doesn't just sit through it is because they're arrogant and entitled and they feel like that there is no place where they shouldn't yell and interrupt everything going on. Like think about the type if you just have that as a prototype who like when would you do that? I mean, if I asked myself that I just go, well, I wouldn't, I would just fucking sit there and not ruin everything for everybody else. You know? Yeah. I just, I, I always, I always give the example. I'll go like, like you might be at a graduation and not agree with something that's being said. You might be at a, you know what I mean? You might be at a play where, like, if you were, like, that same white woman at a play, and there's something off putting between two characters, you wouldn't be at a play like, I don't like this. You yeah, know what of course I mean? not. Yep. Yeah, in the comedy show, they definitely feel like it's fine to do that. And it's, it's obviously, I mean, look, it's at this point, we realize it's just part of the job, but. Yeah, it's hard not to hate them. It's really- <laughs> yeah, I know. It really it really is hard. Like the one that always stands out to me is like when um this happened over the years a few times is like when that person actually gets mad for other people. That's the one that sends me over the top the most when they're like Yes. You shouldn't have said that. And it's like it's not about them, like what are you talking about? And then then there's people who are the joke is about who are like over here, like, Oh no, we're having a good time. Like Yeah, yeah. That's a joke, and we—that's what we're here for. And you know, then this person is trying to dictate how other people should feel, like, like how condescending that is. Oh, uh, I know they don't even—they don't even realize it. Should be upset right now. You're like, I think I can handle my own feelings. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I—I I, I got this. Don't, don't, yeah. don't. You know, I know. It's like I remember, like I like. Like I, if I if I have a joke about somebody about a wheelchair someone in a wheelchair, like I stand by whatever I'm saying, and if there's somebody in a crowd in a wheelchair, I would think that they'd be glad that they're being, oh I'm being included too. Yeah. Like I'm not just some you know, and I just think that that's that's my perspective. But but I think people have their own guilt. They have their own, you know. It's like when somebody goes. Ooh, I mean, you're just agreeing with me when you do that. You're making it worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. So I was gonna also gonna ask you. Um, you know, it's like I, I, so I heard about Michael Yo. Like, you know, Michael Yo was really sick. Yeah. You know, and I was just like, damn. That's when it, like, the first time it really like hit me. Like, damn, like. Cause I always think like comics we're like roaches, you know what I mean? Like we we got we we have our we're getting the germs from that dirty mic like all over the country. Dude, that mic I think, is I, disgusting. The mic is it, d- disgusting, right? <laughs> and sometimes I see comics do some nasty shit where I'm just like, don't put that in your mouth or like. Have you ever not even try, tried, but like unintentionally, you're holding it normally and you can smell the mic. Oh, and you're like, dude, that was shit. It's just like. A hundred dudes with bad breath have been hovering over it, and you're like, you can, you're holding it, and you're like, holy shit, my a, mouth is right next to this fucking thing. Then it touches your lip, you know yep. what I mean? You're just like, oh god, I was at Levity Live in Oxnard, and I had to tell the guy afterwards. I was like, yo, dude, like you need to clean the mic, clean it. Like that's been in someone's butthole. It's so <laughs> disgusting. So, you know what I mean? So, so, but I, so I always felt like we have like, you know, I don't get sick a lot, you know, I felt like, but this is one of these things where you go, you know, you don't want to be like, well, comics aren't going to get it, but it's like, damn, it's touching everybody. You know what I mean? Like I was like, I, I, I was worried about myself. I'm worried about people like Bobby Lee. You know what I mean? Like Bobby's like a fat little fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, you know what I mean? I'm worried about myself. I was worried about I, Bert. I saw Joe Rogan talking about Bert. He was like, man, I'm worried about you. You you know, you drink too much. You did and that, whatever. It's like, you know, so I just feel like I just. Bobby, Bobby's Seems like he could be the origin of the. <laughs> That's yeah. not facial. I just mean <laughs> that he looks like he could be the one that starts a lot of diseases. You know. Yeah, he was like ground zero. <laughs> yeah. No, the Bert Bert thing. It makes sense to worry about. I mean, the story about Michael was so terrible because 
I mean, obviously, you know, he's a, a good guy and a family guy and, and to, see, to hear how sick he was. And then you go like, this is a, this is a healthy dude, you know? He, right. I mean, Michael works out. He's, you know, he's, he's not like a sloppy, um, you know, person who doesn't take care of himself. So you're like, if, guilty. Well, you know? <laughs> if he ends up in the ICU, then you're yeah. like, it, you know? Yeah, that's see. This is why I was bringing it up. I mean, did, did did like what has made you like take a second and like like the first week? Like, I have a friend of mine that's a conspiracy theorist kind of guy who's yeah. always on those kind of websites. So two months ago, he was telling me like, "Yo, man, this virus is gonna be big. You know, you know, it's already in China. Be careful, blah blah blah." Like, you know, and I was like, "Ah, man, shut up." So even though, so when they finally, I was like, "Oh shit, my dude was right." And then, but even the first week, I'm like, "I think I'll be good. I don't think I'm gonna get it." But like, now I'm at the point where it's like, yeah, all the news that comes out, I'm kind of like, "Shit, I don't want to get this. I'm really concerned." What was the moment for you that you thought to yourself like, "This is like really real. Like it's really touching you." I mean, I, I got. I'll be honest. I'm I'm the whatever the opposite of a conspiracy theorist is is me. Um, so like I I. I've never gotten to the point where I feel like I'm in grave danger because of the way that, you know, I follow, I follow the stats, I follow the data and I know we're lucky. Look, California has managed this thing really well. So I just have told myself that I don't really have any danger of getting this if I'm smart about how I, right. My life, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I mean, it, it's a scary thing. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's a scary thing, but I'm not licking doorknobs and you know what I mean? <laughs> in home. I've gone out for essentials. Um, we do have by the city's mandate permission to go to our podcast studio. So I've gone there um, to do podcasts, but we have a essential staff only. So we have what, like three people there. Right. Right. And like, you know, we, we just make sure everybody's like, taking care of themselves and I, I mean look it's it's a it's a it's a serious threat but I think like if I if I was in New York I think I would be in much more of a panic because, oh I agree because I of agree statistics you know yeah um I mean and Michael was in New York before before he got oh see I didn't even know that I didn't yeah. I haven't talked to him I'm trying to get him to come on and talk to me about it because it's like yeah. it's such a I, think I did, just think that he did go ahead. the weekend before mm. I think, I think. Oh, the twelfth and thirteenth, probably. I don't remember the exact dates. It maybe it was the week before that. Um, but yeah, I think I think the story was that he was there, flew back, was sick, and then you know went to, to the hospital. Uh, but a I friend of mine been in a panic about this. Yeah, you haven't. Been, yeah, yeah. Neither have I. I just I'm, the only panic I'm in about is like. I mean, if I'm, it's just a selfish thing for me. I'm just in a panic about like what's what's my business going to be like. You know, yeah. I'm just thinking about my future. I'm thinking about like, you know, am I going to be driving Uber in like a two years? Like, I, you know, I don't know. I just that those are the things yeah. that go through my head. I try not to think like that, but I always think like that. Every time I don't get a job, every time I'm not working, I'm like, oh, God, that was it for me. My, my entertainment career is over now. Like a, a natural sort of disaster is making me feel that way. Dude, I, I have thought in terms of like work, um, how because every time like, you know, like I said, at first this was like. This, your thing is getting delayed a few weeks or a month. And now to think of it as like a three month or six month or maybe even a year long thing. And I go, you know, that's, that's what I do. I mean, I, I do, I, know. I do podcasts and stuff too, but I don't consider myself a podcaster first. Right. I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's like a, a marketing tool to help do the other parts of our business. Everything is just to get people to come to shows. Yeah. And so now we're just like, now we're like, what are we all trying to be Howard Stern now? You know what I mean? Like, that's like, is that the end all now? It's like, it's such a weird, bizarre feeling. Like I worked so hard to get what little I have. And yeah. now I feel like it's just, <laughs> Have you thought about this? Like, I was telling somebody that, you know, the longest I think since I started doing stand up, the longest I've gone without doing stand up is probably somewhere in like the two week, you know, maybe two and a half weeks or something. So I've already, I've already uh, eclipsed that, right? I'm at the, the, the record now. Yeah, you're right. Me too. Me too. Right. So I was thinking, 
for a while it was like, let's say shows come back in June, right? And you've had a few months off. It's going to be strange. It'll be strange for everybody. And you go back on. But what if there's no stand-up for like two years? Something like that. Yeah. Here's the thing. There will be some people who just go like, yeah, I just don't – I'm not going to do stand-up again. Yeah. And I, but, I think that's weird. I, I'm like, oh, yeah. Like you just – you went yeah. on without it, so. Yeah, they're like, they're like, eh, I made a good run or, or – or, but but think of all those people who were like – who were just trying to do it anyway, who had like two jobs to support their stand-up habit. <laughs> and then, you know, those jobs are gone because now they're like – there's just a lot of people where stand up itself beats you down and drives people away every yeah. every year anyway, right? Yeah. So now you have this on top of it. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. There's, there's so many like you know when you do stand up, there's like there's so many tears, tears, yeah, <laughs> that you go through. And like I, I'm thinking of this right now happening and how it would affect me at those different tiers, you know? Because if you had if you had just started, it's actually the best case scenario because you're like, well, right. Just, I just got a taste of it, but man, if you were if you were just if your momentum had just started to get going, I know you maybe you're featuring or you're yeah. like you know you're starting to get you got your t-shirts that you like you know you got uh, you got three hundred t-shirts in your car that you uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and think about this: think of all the ones that like didn't start a podcast when they should have probably, and now they're trying to do it now. They are. And, you know, and they're just like, hey, uh, and it's like, and it's just not the same. I'm so glad I started when I did, dude. I, this is this will be like episode 79 for me or something yeah. like that. You know, so I'm just getting into it, but th- I'm so glad that I did. You know, you have the foundation; it's already a thing. It's like I know there's people scrambling right now to start one, and yeah, uh, that'll be that'll be a challenge. I mean, some some will thrive, obviously, but. It's hard. This to- is already a challenge. It's a challenge for me at this level that I'm doing it. So yeah. I can't even imagine being like somebody with, like, say, no notoriety at all. Like, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, they're just like, oh, I'm funny. And so I, I'll get it'll it'll catch fire on YouTube. I, I read a statistic that it's like it takes six years to really start to catch get a thing going on YouTube, you wow. know. For a regular, like, I think for some of us, it was like we already had some things going on, TV appearances, specials, so we had a little bit of a following, so this is easier. But, like, just for a regular person, you know, I don't know. There's space out there. I mean, there's 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 YouTube channels that, like, right. they just do they do weird things, and you go, I can't believe that they have a million followers. Like, there's, there's, there's YouTube channels that, like, dwarf comedian channels, totally. and it's and it's just, like, nonsense stuff, you know? know? Electronics, how to work your camera, how you know? <laughs> opening a box of toys and unboxing. Right, right, right. So there's there's room out there, but I just can't I – mean, we're just talking about comedians because we're comedians, and it's just, like, thinking, like, my God, what, what are people going to do? You know what I mean? It's devastating, dude. It's devastating. Yeah. M- March 12th was my birthday, and I was in – Hey, bro. Thank you. I was in Tennessee at, at uh, the the Comedy Catch yeah. on the twelfth. That Chatt- so Chattanooga. Yeah. So so I'm in Chattanooga. <laughs> it's so funny. Like they they put you in this like they put you in this condo. Okay. Yeah. And I <laughs> when I got to the condo, I'm already a little. I'm nervous about the Corona shit. And then there's a sign that says, "Please wash your own dishes." I was like, "I'm out." You know what I mean? Like, you think I'm going to trust comedians uh-uh. washed dishes? Hell no. You know what I mean? I was like, I don't, you know, I, we're so spiteful and and uh, resentful of staying in condos anyway that people put their balls and stuff. I, I know, I've heard horror stories, people, right? Yeah. So I, I got a hotel. I, I got the hotel. I paid for it out of pocket. Weekend? Yeah, I was working the weekend. What? And you stayed? Like, they didn't cancel the shows or anything? No, no because this is one of those little clubs where... This affects them. Like they're not a chain. Like this is this guy's whole business, man. Doesn't that club? Because I did a one nighter there, and it was a few years ago. I remember. I think I pulled the guy aside, and I, I want to say near the bathroom, there's a sign that said like, "You get three warnings, and that's it." And you're. And I was like, "Hey, dude, is this for real?" And he was like, "Yeah." And I go three warnings. He's like, "Absolutely." And then that's it. I go, "Why would you give so many warnings?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why isn't it one warning so that it's a warning 
and then you're out. And he's like, oh, no, you can't do that. And I was like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to tell yeah, I- me, hey, man, I'm going to come back here two more times. Two time. more times. <laughs> he was like, yeah, exactly. I was like. Mm-hmm. No, dude, I, I, it's funny you say that because I had a situation that weekend with some people. Of and course. I was just thinking, and then I'm looking around, and I'm going, "You ever, you ever, are you ever at a comedy club like in the past? Because you're in a different situation now. But like, you ever at these comedy clubs where like you look out and you realize there's no security, you're in a weird city by yourself, yes. and then you're looking at a table of people who hate you, and you're thinking to yourself, anything can happen to me right now. Of course, you know what I mean? Yes, I mean I, I think about one incident too where I was doing a, and I, I get, I got mad at myself. Because it was like a, it's like a lesson that I learned, where I was twenty minutes into uh, like a Friday night or Saturday night show, it was completely packed, and I was just riding a wave, like I was crushing. And in that, like in that environment of crushing, I looked at a ta- one table that, so- and I saw like three people stone faced, and I, I have learned I learned it that night. Like I, I would never do it again, but I stopped, I stopped what I was doing to be like, Oh, you're not having a good time. <laughs> and shit went so sideways, because, <laughs> but not only did everything go sideways and terribly that when things got really combative with them, I'm sitting there like I keep, I'm on mic, like talking, like who is going to get involved with these people? And I'm seeing staff walk by, and I'm like, hello, dude. So after the show, I'm like, why the fuck didn't you do anything? And they were like, what do you mean? And I'm like, when I was fighting with that table, <laughs> like, oh, I never noticed that. I'm like, what? Like, the whole show stopped. And they were like, I never saw it. And I was like, no. Yeah, they're just, they don't care. They're just worried about their drinks and their things, you know? But the, I hated myself for, like, you know, like, you could have just, you could have ignored those faces and, like, kept yeah. with the show. But and that's just a comic I, thing. I know. I stopped the show to be like, why aren't you laughing? Like, Yeah, yeah. It's like we could see a room full of people killing, just dying laughing. And there's one person with their arms crossed. That's it. And that's the person we fucking fixate on. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. You know? But it's just per capita, just percentage wise. Not everybody in the room enjoying what you're doing. You would, yeah. th- you know what I mean? Like it's just there's just probably ten percent of people who are like, I didn't want to come to this, but my girl is a fan, or yeah, 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 or whatever it is, right? Right. So you sh- extrapolate that to the public. That's why. But you also, you also like you learn it more with with age and perspective. You also don't know yes. that like when you see that face, you don't know what that person went through that day. Right. You don't know what's on their mind. Is it something weighing on them from work from home? Are they exhausted? Yeah, are, yeah, yeah, man. Are they drunk? Are they high? Yeah. Are they sad? I mean, there's like... I know. it's. But things. you know what? Isn't that the amazing thing about what we do anyway at live performance? Like, if you think about it, here we are trying to wrangle, you know, 250 people who don't know each other, yeah. don't look alike, different economic, social backgrounds, and we have to somehow make them all agree. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. It so it shouldn't be surprising that yeah. it's not 100%. <laughs> right. Which is like, you know, it, it makes me real. Like one time, I, I don't know if you ever, like, I was kind of like, you know, am I a real fan of anything? Like a oh. super fan? There's things I like. And I was kind of like beating myself up. And then I realized that without kind of stopping and saying it, I realized I am like a super fan of comedy of stand-up like i i love watching great stand-up i love uh, it got you you know what i mean like I, yeah. I got into this because i'm actually a huge fan of it and and you then, then, was there a point that was there a point that you like got back to that because there's a point when we're coming up and we're trying to do it that you're you're, you're, you're you know you become a little jaded yeah you know well i i i i think i'm both I coexist with both things at the same time. I don't, I mean, I do have bitterness and, and like, um, you know, and I, I wouldn't say I'm a bitter person, but I'm saying I have that like grumpiness to me. Um, yeah. and like, I'll be like, I don't want to watch comedy or anything like that. But when you put like a great comic on stage in front of me and I, and just point me to watch and they're really talented, 
dude, it's the most enjoyable thing to me. Like I, yeah, I yeah. love. It. I think that's why I was drawn to it. You know. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. I, I know. I know exactly what you're saying. So I find. I think I'm. I have that duality in me too. Yeah. I feel like, like I could sit in the back of the comedy store sometimes and be like, oh, I'm really enjoying this person that I know, yeah. and I'm like, oh, that's. I, I love this. How this is working, and we get so intellectual about it too in our heads, and sometimes yeah. we forget to like just enjoy the laughter. I think I'll probably I think we'll all kind of be reinvigorated with that. Yeah. You know. I know but we'll, we'll we'll have to sit through like 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 how many months of you know just hack quarantine jokes do you think are going to be out there like you know like we're going to go to the comedy store and it's just like you know it's like you know the, the every comic's going to be like you know well quarantine this is what was happening with me it's like so just many- add your joke and then just add during quarantine. <laughs> quarantine Corona jokes. Somebody told me they're like, "Aren't you excited that you'll be doing? Um, you'll have all this material." And I was like, "What are you talking well, about?" Well, yeah, my, my thought was, I was like, "Yeah, all all's going to happen is like you're going to have to watch everybody's stuff to see if <laughs> stepping on each other, and there'll be a bunch of horrible shit you'll have to sit through." And, I know, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, and also, in these last few weeks. I have not had a funny thought about this come to mind. You know what I, I mean? know exactly what you mean. I know and and, and, and I find my I find myself as being one of those people that can make anything funny. I believe yeah. that about myself, you yeah. know? So but it's just like I just the only thing that I have now is that my girlfriend is Jewish and we had a Zoom Seder with her family uh-huh. and hilarious. <laughs> really? Did just that, every just everything that was happening with her family on the screen and what they were doing, I just like I was dying. <laughs> that's unique. See that that those are like the ones where you go, that's not going to be the reason. It's so first of all, you could put a hundred comics on stage and they did not have a Zoom Seder. So you that, know what? You know what though? You'd be surprised. I mean, but well, here's the other thing though. You're not Jewish, right? Right. I'm not. So what, <laughs> what makes it funny? is that you're an outsider witnessing that. That's what makes it unique. Yeah. Like there will be people who zoomed with their families, but less people who zoomed a religious, you know, <laughs> yeah. dinner just... with something that they're not in- directly involved in. I think that's what makes it like interesting to watch. Like it'll be your commentary on all that. You know? Right, right, right. It was I wanted to record it. I but I couldn't like I needed everybody's permission. It was like let me record this because this is gonna be like I could have just done an episode about it. I could have been in my Seder reaction episode. Yeah. <laughs> that, that'll be that'll be something that I would be excited to watch. Is like uh, Yeah, dude, that just was so funny. So I don't know. I just I mean I'm I I, I we're talking about stand up. It's making me right now just I, I miss it. Like I realize how much I miss it. Like two like a week ago, every day around nine ish is when I started to feel something. Cause yeah. like this is the time I'm like, I gotta get ready to go to the comedy store. Yeah. And so it's like I, I needed that. I was like, Oh shit. I didn't realize how much that was a part of my life. Like how religiously it was like a religious thing that you just go every I five times a week I'm doing this. You know, and it's just, it's just, it's just strange to like, but you know, hopefully, hopefully we're going to get back to it. You know, I just, uh, you know, I want to go to movies. I miss going to movies. I was a movie person, like on the road, you know, that's where I saw all my movies. My girlfriend's super sensitive. So like, if there's, if there's any violence on the screen, she just is like, Oh, I, I, you know, yeah, it, you know, so like I have to go to all those movies by myself and that's what I do. I go on the road. I got my AMC pass. Those you know, are- I watched. <laughs> yeah. Uh- yeah. Going to movies on the road is fun. I, I I do it too, man. Yeah, you know, I, you know. Let me ask you this: like, I didn't realize how peaceful it could be to eat and go to movies by myself until I started doing stand up. Yeah, yeah. Because because before that, it was like I felt, oh man, what a loser! I I have to have somebody go with me. No. N- um, I do. I you know how I'll go to a fancy ass steakhouse on the road by myself. Yeah. With some headphones on iPad on the other seat, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> and just just chowing down on a ribeye like a like a king. It's enjoyable. <laughs> it's so enjoyable. <laughs> nobody's nobody's getting on me about the butter I'm putting on the. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just it's just so. It's like I just. Uh, when will we get back to that? I, I miss going to restaurants, man. I miss sushi. I miss Korean barbecue. I miss, you know what I mean? Like, when's the restaurant business going to come back? Because they're they're trying with this, you know, oh, d- delivery, delivery. But I know that some of them can't stay open. I know some of them can't keep going. 
That's that's a real bummer. I mean, yes, I'm a big restaurant enjoyer as well, and uh, it's been a it's been heartbreaking to to see like restaurants that you I love close or they're yeah. happen that part. You see swing swingers close down for good. Did I, I used to go there like I mean years. Man, that was the spot. Like after the store, people go to swingers. It's just it's sad. Yeah, it's real sad. Yeah, that was like where can we go after this set? To, uh, that's still open and fun, and uh, that was that was the spot, man. I know. Well, look, man, I don't want to keep you any longer. We've been talking for a good amount of time, and uh, I do uh, I do appreciate you doing this. Uh, and please, guys, you know, make sure you watch Ball Hog. It's on uh, Netflix right now. It's uh, going strong, I, and I, I hear it, it crushed. Right? You had some good numbers. They said it, they said it did well. I'm happy to hear it. I'm, I'm trying not to ask too many questions. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like that's it. Hear no evil, see no evil, say no evil. But uh, one of the funniest guys out there, Mr. Tom Segura, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you soon, buddy. I enjoy talking with you. Thanks, brother. You too, man. Thanks for doing it. All right, buddy. All right, take care.